Hi everybody, welcome back once again to the Eastfield Gun Room YouTube channel and you'll notice today we've got a completely new location. We join you from the 99% completed Eastfield actual gun room. So exciting news, we'll be showing you more of the gun room over the coming weeks, but for now you get the wall on the side and me. So the gun we're going to look at today is a model that we've looked at previously on the channel a month or so ago and it's a gun that continues to grow in popularity throughout the world, certainly here in the UK. And I was talking to a client from Canada on the phone yesterday about who's interested in one of these particular types of gun. It is just massive. I think it's really, really kind of on the crest of a wave in terms of winning Olympic medals. And so today we're going to have another look at a Beretta DT11. Now, if you haven't seen the DT11 video with you previously, it was the DT11 Gold. That was a limited edition gun um, to commemorate the Tokyo Olympics. Do check out the video. Now, this is a different type of DT11, but again, like I said before, a lot of the time it's down to aesthetics. So a little bit of history, the DT11 was first launched back in 2012, and at the time it was kind of a bit out there. It got this Nistan finish on the action with these blue lines, and some people took to it, and some people didn't. It was as simple as that. If, if you were a traditionalist, you like scroll engraving, or you like game scene, or even you were coming from kind of the DT10, which was a little bit less in your face, you might have looked at a DT11 and thought, I don't like that. So what happened is in 2015, a couple of years into the DT11 uh, production life, Beretta looked at launching the luxury versions of the DT11 shotgun. Now what that basically meant is when they produced the DT10, which was from memory 2000 to 2011 or 12, alongside the standard DT Trident competition line of guns in sport, in trap and skeet, they also produced a luxury range, or Lusso in Italian, which means luxury, and they did a DT-10L and a dt 10 double l both of which were available in either a scroll or a game scene variant. So what we got in 2016, we got the launch of the DT-11L, or Lusso. So you got a game scene version and a scroll version. Now what this kind of did is it kind of looked at the market in terms of particularly Parazzi, who are Bretta's, I'm going to use the word, huge rivals, you know, globally. Uh, and with the Parazzi, there was, yes, there was the option to buy a kind of plainish looking competition gun, or some people like to use plain black action MX-12 for game shooting. But at the same time, if you wanted something a bit more ornate, Parazzi could cater for it 100% because they had dozens and dozens of different engraving styles. Whereas Beretta, completely different in terms of a manufacturing process, much, much, much higher volume than Parazzi. But obviously they wanted to keep up with them and they wanted to draw people away from shooting Parazzi's uh, that wanted a, a high grade engraved gun back to shooting Berettas. And this is the result. This is the DT-11L. This gun was launched with a, obviously a larger price tag than a standard DT-11 because it was aimed at people that either wanted to go that extra level in terms of what their clay gun looked like or for people who wanted a, a heavier gun to shoot taller pheasants. We talk about this all the time, but game shooting here in the UK has evolved massively over the last sort of 10 years to the point where we now want big, heavy guns, big, heavy cartridges. I was talking to a client the other day who's been actually been shooting game this season with 50 gram zero shot cartridges, which 20 years ago was absolutely unheard of. So because of that, we need these guns that are heavier, that are lower recoil to cope with the, um, the rigors of modern day game shooting here in the UK. So there's a bit of history, now onto the gun. So I was actually over at the Breta factory in 2015 with clients having stocks made, custom stocks for DT11s and the like. And whilst I was there, the, the stock makers at Beretta actually gave some of my customers um, some of these DT11L models as slave guns. And what I mean by slave guns, it's a gun that they use as a kind of try gun to try and ascertain what dimensions are required in terms of producing a custom stock. I'm sure custom stocks is something we will look at later on in the in the channel. So what happened is I got customers there and they were given these nicely engraved game scene scroll guns and the comment the comments were what's this Matt I've never seen it before. So my question was I don't know what I'll find out and the answer came back was this is the new DT11L or Lusso Luxury we're going to call it uh, and several of the clients that with me actually said look I really like the DT11 but I'm not a fan of the blue let's have one of them. That's what happened from my point of view, and that's how I learned about this particular model. So what we've got here today, we've got a Game Scene Sporter in 32 inch. So to put things into perspective, in terms of Parazzi, it's a completely different manufacturing process. Beretta is much, much higher volume. But having said that, and a lot of people don't understand this, 
that they don't actually manufacture that many DT11s. It's around about four, four and a half thousand a year, and that's completely across the whole range of models, and that's for the whole worldwide market. So it's not actually that many. So with the DT11 out, it was a big upgrade from the plain action gun, if you like. So what we've got here is to start with the, the action, we've got the box lock action with the Kirsten bolt locking system, which again came traditionally from the DT10 and prior to that, the ASE, and is still used today in the SO range of shotguns, which makes it super durable, extremely, extremely strong. And that's what you need from a competition gun that is designed to shoot a lot, a lot, a lot of shotgun cartridges. We'll start with the action. Like I said, you haven't got the Azori blue line, You've got a slightly different finish on the action. It hasn't got the Nistan kind of nickel finish. It's much more of a brushed finish, which I think make, it kind of enhances the engraving and makes you look a more premium product than what you'd get with the nickel. And the reason I say that is because the finishing process is a little bit similar to a 687EEL, whereas again, the nickel you would get with kind of the Silver Pigeon range, et cetera, et cetera. So I think this kind of matte finish really, really works well with the, the engraving on the, uh, on the box lock. So on here, we've got ducks on the one side, pheasants on the other, which is kind of what you traditionally have on a game gun. And then it's surrounded by this really, really nice deep floral scroll, which goes all over the bottom of the action into the trigger guard. And then of course, we've just got just on the side of the trigger here where the detachable trigger unit drops out, the name of the engraving studio that was instrumental in the design and application of this laser engraving process. And you've even got engraving across the top of the breech where the barrels join. You've got engraving on the top lever. The back strap is engraved. And of course, it's all these little extras that go towards the fact that this was sold at a premium price over the standard competition DT11 with the, with the blue line. So in terms of the mechanics of it, say we've got a dropout trigger, which is what DT stands for. If you've not seen the other videos, do check them out. So easiest way to get the trigger out is push the safety off push the selector safety all the way forward, open the barrels, and it will literally drop out. Looks easy, can be a bit tricky, but once you've done it a few times, absolutely fine. Now this 32 inch gun, as with all DT11s, has got the Stelium Pro barrel construction. So what that basically means is it's all down to do with the length of the forcing cones. Now if you've got a standard Beretta 690, 692 or whatever, they are much shorter in terms of the forcing cone length to a DT11. The DT11 forcing cone is 480 millimeters long. And what that does is it gives you excellent ballistics and most importantly, a very, very, very smooth shooting shotgun. Interestingly enough, the barrel weight on here is 1570 grams. Now, the early DT11s were really, really heavy in the barrels. And that's why, particularly from people who, you know, owned and loved DT10s, oh, I've got to have a DT11, I've got to have a DT11 that's just come out didn't really warm to them because they were that flipping heavy. And that was largely to do with the fact that the barrels were too heavy, certainly for UK shooters in the first place. So what Beretta did is they then kind of slimmed them back to kind of the DT10-ish spec. So what you'll find, if you get a 32 inch gun, the barrel weight will be somewhere between sort of 1530 and 1570. This one's 1570, which gives a overall weight of eight pound eight ounces. The balance is, we'll check in a second and see what it's like. But just going back to the barrels, high performance, fleur de lis, steel shot proofed, uh, engine turning. Say you've got the, the flared block, which is the standard um, that all Beretta uh, guns from the SO factory or have got any kind of SO pedigree have got. And the locking bolt, 10 by 8 sporting rib, tapered sporting rib. Now on this particular gun, we've got extended Optima HP coloured banded chokes. Again, if you wanted to use this gun for game shooting, if it was me, I would put some flush fitting chokes in it, which may affect the balance ever so slightly because it will reduce the weight on the muzzle end of the barrels, but it will just look a bit better and it will just fit in, in my opinion, um, in terms of the, the lines of the gun and from, a, from an aesthetics point of view on a game shoot, just look a bit nicer. Ventilated barrels. Now, the trigger itself, I've mentioned it before, I'll mention it again quickly. The idea with a detachable trigger, three reasons really. You've got maintenance, you can take the trigger out, blast it full of oil, pop it back in. You know, you make sure it's clean periodically if you want to. Uh, safety, you go shooting, you know, different places throughout the country or even the world. You can drop it out, put it in your sock drawer, put it with your shaving foam, whatever, and it's safe. So you don't, you've got it away from the, from the action of the shotgun. And also the, the, the main one really is reliability because if you're shooting all over the world, competing in huge, huge, you know, events, 
you don't need to take an additional shotgun with you. You can just take the trigger group. Trigger itself, really, really crisp. I've owned a couple of DT11s and the triggers are absolutely sublime. Really, really nice and smooth, nice and crisp. As good as any on the market. Yes, the Parazzi trigger is exceptional. The Blazer is very good, as is the Kriegoff. Personally, there's not a lot to choose between them, but if you shoot a DT11 in terms of the trigger pulls, you won't be disappointed. Obviously, you've also got an engraved trigger guard latch as well as engraved forend eye. You know, there really is a lot of, it's profusely engraved this gun is, like I said, done by laser, but done to a very, very high standard. You know, you could put this against the likes of probably a Parazzi, which was hand engraved, and you wouldn't really tell the difference. A lot of manufacturers these days use laser and acid etching and that kind of stuff, you know, quad axis lasers, because the quality of the engraving that can be achieved is just so, so good. Particularly when you're building a pair of shotguns, because of course you want them to be as identical as possible in terms of the ward, the weight, the balance. But if the engraving is done in the same way, the same process, it is also as good as you can get. Right, let's pop the trigger back in. Child's play. Balance test. Eight pound, eight ounces on the hinge pin. That is pretty good. Maybe a touch nose heavy. Obviously, we mentioned the chokes. Also, having said that, this has got the, the BFAS stock weighting system in the gun. It's currently naked and there's no weights in it. So moving on to the stock. Beretta Dimensions, standard these days. 35, 55 in terms of the drop at comb, the drop at heel. It's about four to eight mil of cast. And that tends to suit quite a lot of shooters. Obviously, the DT11 itself is available with adjustable comb. They do a, a Monte Carlo version with a big high rip cord and ACS. So there is something in the DT11 range for everybody. Like I said, this is the DT11L, which is the luxury version, which is kind of proved very popular for people who want to shoot clays and game. And they also do a scroll engraved variant of it. Now, what's interesting is I can always recall back from the DT10 days, that the DT10 double E double L, which is extra, extra luso luso or luxury luxury, as per the 687 double E video, do check it out. It was always more popular in the DT10 range in the game scene rather than the scroll. They only manufactured today, but only manufacture the DT11 double E double L in a scroll version with, a, I understand, no plans to do a game season, which I find crazy because, you know, the game scene version was really, really popular in the DT10 double E double L. So you would have expect that Beretta would maybe look at that and produce a DT11 double E double L. Maybe we'll get it in the future. Who knows? Obviously, with the introduction of the SL3 in the last few years, maybe they're looking more to that for people who want to shoot game and, and, uh, and own a, a premium shotgun. So onto the grade of the wood. Now, Amazingly, with a DT10L and with a DT11L, you didn't actually get an upgrade on wood. You were literally paying for the aesthetics in terms of the engraving. Again, wood is very subjective. This is class three, like it was on the DT11 Gold video that we did. I think this is an exceptionally well piece of figured European walnut. It's got a really nice color to it. It's strong in the head. It's got some nice figure at the back here, and it's got the standard kind of DT11 curved pointy checkering. Slight palm swell, which again, from my point of view, a competition gun should have a palm swell. And you've also got this diamond um, detailing on the top of the stock, again, as with all DT11 models. This particular one has got a 14 and 5 8 length of pull, which is about 370 millimeters. This has got one of the original rubber Beretta pads rather than the more modern microcore. However, it's completely interchangeable. Uh, some people like this because it gives a better a better hold in the shoulder, but it can also be a little bit sticky. So again, with the recoil pad, very universal, and there's something for everybody if you've got a DT11. These are available in longer and shorter lengths, and again, with spacers as well. Schnabel forend, which although I'm a big fan of beaver tails, I do think, fair enough on a game gun, I think the line is better with a, a Schnabel forend. And if you don't like the, the actual lip on it, I've seen many people just kind of have them taken off by a gunsmith and have them have them rounded off to suit. So as a previous DT11 owner, there's just something about these guns. You open them, you close them, they, seal, they feel so, so positive. And, you know, it's testament to the fact that they are popular worldwide. They are still winning medals. I would imagine that Beretta probably can't produce them fast enough in line with everything else they've got to make. And it just is an exceptional, exceptional gun. And I would urge anybody that wants a 
a serious level competition gun or something as a crossover or just to shoot game like this that was a heavier gun, you should definitely look at a DT-11 or a DT-11L. The case, again, it was exactly the same with the DT-10L. You got the same case as you did with the DT-10. Ultimately, it's just a presentation piece, but this one is complete with all the bits that I just wanna show you. So we'll just pop the case open. So what you do get with the DT-11, I can't remember if I touched on this in the last video we did or not, you do get a pair of genuine plastic Beretta snap caps, and you also get a spares parts box. Now in the spares parts box, as well as the screwdriver to adjust the length of pull on the trigger and the spare beads, you also actually get a set of firing pins and springs. You did with the DT-10, exactly the same. It'll take a long time before you'll need these because the guns are so well made and so well engineered. But I think from a peace of mind point of view, it's just nice to have them in the box. Stock tool, I've said many, many times, you've invested a lot of money into a shotgun, you need to look after it periodically, get your stock tool out, ram it up the back and give it a good tight enough, all right? Chokes, we talked about the fact that this has got the Optima extended HP chokes. The bores, incidentally, are 18.6 tapered, um, which is actually quite heavily overboard. Then you've got the long forcing cones, but in terms of patterns, even with fiber wads, these guns perform, in my opinion, faultlessly. And then here you've got your little stickers and things, your little barrel socks. And, you know, again, from a presentation point of view, it's very nice. And I don't know if we showed you these in the previous video again, but these are the WAD BFAST stock weights. So basically what they do is you get a series of them, you get 20 and 40 grams, and they go in the back of the stock, below the stock bolt, there is a little recessed hole and that screw screws into it with your desired weights. Another point to note is if you buy a Beretta product, Beretta DT11 here in the UK, you get the option via the UK importers GMK to upgrade the warranty to 10 years from the standard three years. Again, this is testament to how good these guns are, how reliable are, and you know, manufacturers don't sort of give away 10 year warranties just like that. There's a lot of manufacturers that offer much, much less in terms of warranty. So again, it just shows how good a piece of equipment this is. Yes, there's gonna be people who are fans of Parazzi's, are fans of Browning's. Ultimately, we're all different. We all have different preferences of how a gun should feel, how a gun should look. So there we go, that's been the Bretta DT11 Luso. If you've got any comments about this particular gun, do comment below. Don't forget to like and subscribe to the channel. Don't forget the website. Feel free to email me directly. One thing I do want to point out is we are doing an awful lot of export, so it's no problem to get something like this or any kind of desired gun into your country. Do get in touch with this and we'll be happy to help you with some details. Thanks for watching. See you soon.